Welcome to the Unstoppable Profit Podcast. Wherever you are today, if you're starting with nothing or are well on your way to the success you desire with the right people, processes, and promotions in place, you will be unstoppable. And now, I'd like to introduce your host, Mike Strong. Welcome, friends. This is Mike Stompson coming to you live from the Living Agency Laboratory, and I am uber pumped and excited. Uh, we are bringing somebody who has accomplished so much uh, so far in their UPP journey to the podcast today in the next episode. I am excited to learn more, uh, to share with you all the details. I'm going to attempt to pull them out of him. Uh, Mr. Jose Soriano is on the podcast. Jose, good afternoon. How are you, sir? Good afternoon, Mike. Thank you for having me here. Hey, you're welcome. I am glad you're here. Uh, I am honored to uh, be by your side uh, in our UPP journey and just watch the speed at which you take action uh, is inspiring, motivating, and an honor and a privilege. So great job there. Uh, some cool, cool things have happened uh, recently in your agency, and I want to dig in and get the details and share it uh, with everybody who either watches and or listens to our podcast. But before we go there, uh, let's really find out who is Jose Soriano. Uh, share with us a little bit about yourself, if you want to include a little bit about your family. Fantastic. Who are you? Uh, absolutely, Mike. Uh, well, I'm Jose Soriano from Glow First Insurance Agency from Palmdale, California. Uh, taking you guys a little bit back, I got started in the industry when I was 18. I come from a uh, business owning uh, working class family. Uh, they used to run bakeries. I grew up in the bakery industry. So I grew up waking up early, 3 a.m., working late nights, no weekends. I, I knew one thing. I knew that wasn't going to be my future, Mike. <laughs> I knew I wanted to, you know, do something better with my life. And uh, what ended up happening when I hit the age of 18, uh, unfortunately, at the time, I wasn't really uh, focused when it came down to having good grades in school. So a lot of the universities, when I try to apply, uh, they declined my application. So at 18, I got introduced into the insurance industry and I actually started in the life insurance industry. You know, so imagine an 18 year old trying to sell an investment account or a term insurance account to, 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 you know, I will get things like, oh, you know, I could teach you everything. What do you want to learn? And, and things like that. And uh, two years into that, I, I remember uh, looking into the PNC world and, um, and I, we used to have a, uh, we used to have an office right next to my parents' bakery. And one day I just walked in there and I told uh, the manager there, I, I was like, who's the manager here? They introduced me to him. I said, what do I have to do to get a job here? And they were like, you know what, what you need to do is you need to go get a license. So I went home, I searched it. I looked it up two weeks later. I was like, here's my test. I passed. When do I start? And that was the beginning <laughs> to the PNC world for me. Uh, you know, I started in a small agency. I, I learned a lot very quickly. I, I started to help a uh, hundred families a month working for somebody else. I started to do very high years in six months. Actually, I believe uh, being part of that uh, life insurance, uh, you know, company helped me a lot with my confidence, helped me a lot with connecting. It just made it really easy for me to go in there and just dominate, you know, that, that area. And in, um, in 2012, uh, Carla, I'm married. Uh, I have, uh, as, as of the time of this recording, I have three kids and my wife, we're expecting. So <laughs> we're actually going to we're, we're gonna have a baby boy. Uh, you know, it's programmed to be here in November. So, so, uh, so we just found out the sex and, and I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for, for providing a good future for them. And, and ever since we, uh, since we got started in the insurance, in the insurance industry, Mike, back in 2012, uh, we we had a you know we had a clear purpose and one thing was that we wanted to make a difference and be known amongst the industry we didn't want to just join to make a couple of, you know make a good living we wanted to you know change the way the industry did business moving forward and and it's been an amazing ride i mean it's been great to be part of the of the upp family and it's lot it's taught us a lot but if, if i have to say one thing that we gained you know, thus far from it is awareness, which for me, that's a very powerful word. Fantastic. Well, thank you again for the opportunity and congratulations on your success so far. And bigger than that, congratulations on your next family member uh, upcoming. And uh, we look forward to total health. Uh, please extend our best to Carla and let her know to obviously take care of herself. So uh, we can't yes. wait. Um, so you're located uh, in Palmdale, California, correct? That is correct. Okay. Great story. What a fantastic story. So 
one of the things that I have loved to learn more about you, and it seems like every time that we get on uh, the phone for a one-on-one -on -one call or, or a coaching session or anything like that, uh, I talk to you about, well, what do you have in mind next? And you've got something else in mind for the future vision of your business. And, and I believe that you are the epitome of an entrepreneurial visionary. So kudos to you for that. So what's your vision for Global First? Uh, you've built an agency up now. How many team members do you have roughly? Right now we have six. Okay, so you have six team members already. I think last time we talked, you had five. So I, I know that I saw you uh, put a post up that uh, you're, you implemented our hiring system and it started working really well. And all of a sudden you had a big funnel full of candidates. Virtual high five for you there. Um, way to go. So, so you have a team of six. What's your future vision for Global First? Uh, one year, three years, five years down the road and beyond that. Yes, yes, definitely. Well, we want to be that company. You know, we want to be that company that people go to, uh, that they can rely on and that they see as a credible source for not only just helping them with one uh, product, but being able to ensure everything that's important to them. You know, right. as part of our company, we also have a tax division. So our goal is to distribute those services to families and, and have omnipresence in the cities we choose to be present in. Uh, we, uh, in the next five years, uh, I see us having a minimum of six locations. Uh, actually, through the, through the Platinum pro Program, we were able to understand how to create that perfect cookie cutter, like you were mentioning earlier about the hiring process. So we just, we just hired our, our, you know, someone else through it. We, uh, we took 10 people through the process. We did the questionnaire. People, you know, people didn't go, you know, some people didn't make it to the next round. We ended up filtering up to five. Out of those five, three showed up. Out, out of those three, we made a decision based on, on those assessments to see who was going to be the true team player that was going to help us, you know, uh, run that company. So with it, that seven steps, I call it the seven-step hiring process because that, that's what I noticed that, that you have. And we put together, we put the seven steps. And, I mean, now we have a system. Now we have a process. So as we develop other cities, uh, our goal for the immediate future is to open up in the city of Victorville. That's going to be where we're going to be penetrating. We had to put it off for, for several reasons, but we're going to get there and we're going to go into that city. Then we're going to take it to Bakersfield. And then with the cookie cutter system that we now understand and the hiring process, we're able to move a lot faster and with a lot more clarity. Fantastic. Well, in our industry, in the independent insurance agency industry, uh, one of the absolute keys, congratulations, by the way. Uh, I love that. And the other, the other cool thing that I discovered during our one day is we were able to begin to document that vision. So now that you yeah. have uh, the vision here, you've been able to put it onto the paper and you have a game plan, a blueprint, if you will, that you can follow. Yeah. So that's awesome stuff as well. So yeah, go ahead. Mike, th this is how I see it, guys. I see might be that franchise you, you people join franchises because they want to learn how to do things they want somebody to tell them what to do uh like okay i want to make sure my energy is put in the right in the right direction the way i see this investment is you invest into like a franchise you know similar system but you still own 100 percent of your business to me that's priceless absolutely but yeah, and there's people that want the entrepreneurial chair and there's people that don't want the entrepreneurial chair. They just want to earn a respectable living and there's nothing wrong with that. We all need those people. So you see it. And it, as you know, vision is the art of seeing things that other people can't see. So another virtual high five for you. So you've got this vision for the future. Kudos for you on implementing the seven step hiring process and system for your business. Uh, just awesome stuff. Don't forget, uh, don't forget to constantly be improving and tweaking because something's going to change uh, probably in the next five or 10 minutes, if not sooner. So um, now that you've got that in place, now you have the vision for the future. You have the written blueprint. Uh, great stuff. As you know, in the independent insurance agency business, we have another need that we have to have by our side other than teammates, other than vision, and that's carrier partners because mm -hmm. we have to have the resources because yet not yet you and i don't have the gold to make the rules right yes we haven't gotten to our first 25 million i mean we need at least 25 million to be able to start an insurance company and until we get there <laughs> right so um mm -hmm. we need carrier partners by our side and you have part of your vision is knowing 
that you want to start moving towards also having a preferred uh, agency business arm. And you made the decision to do that. And bigger than that, you made the decision to do that and you took action. So good for you on that. So uh, you, you contacted us. Uh, I don't know if it was on a coaching call, an emergency call. It does not matter. We talked and you said, hey, I've got this opportunity coming up. What do I do? I, I said, well, you do this, this, and this. Tell us in detail about the process that you went through after that call to prepare yourself because uh, we recently learned that you had success and you got the appointment, right? Correct. Okay, so Correct. Yes, give, us, give us some uh, dirty details on that. So, so, I mean, with everything that's going on, you know, a lot of us had to go home and a lot of us had to work from home. And, and, I, and I said, you know, what can I do how can I, you know, make sure that when we get ready to go back, we're going to be in a position that we're going to be ahead of the game. Uh, so what I started to do is I started to contact carriers. This has been carriers that I actually been following up for more than two years. Every six months, I will give them a call. Like, I'm just following up to see where we are now. This is where we're at as an agency. This is how much we've grown. Let us, let us know where we stand. So every six months for two years, for two years, for two years, this past, uh, uh, you know, uh, I believe it was on, on, on March, March 25th, when everything shut down in California, everybody was asked to be home. I contacted the rep and I, and I, was, and I, and I told her, you know what, we're here now. What do we need to do? And then they were like, you know what, right now we're, we're actually waiting for, for a rep in your, in your area, but we'll be in contact. So I kept that constant communication. Little did you know, two days later, I get the call from the rep. They're like, Jose, tell me more about your agency. So then this, this rep, now this is a big company. This is not a small company. Uh, right. I, you know, I'll say names, I'll say company A. Uh, but they have, well, let me ask you to pause for just a minute. Let's, let's wet their whistle a little bit. It's a top five national carrier. Agreed. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Back Definitely. to you. <laughs> yeah. And, and what we did is, uh, everything was done through the phone. Like, uh, we sold the vision of the company. We did everything over the phone. We told, we, we were, we're sharing how we could be a good partnership. And we got to a point where they asked us for a business plan. You know, so that's when I made the, it was an emergency call. I was like, hey, Mike, listen, this is where we're at. They're asking us for a business plan. And actually through, through you and through several other Platinum members, uh, you know, we were able to get a skeleton. And what we did is we created a PowerPoint, you know, a PowerPoint, a visual PowerPoint that we sent to the carrier. And, and what, what we did, we included a lot of things. You were able to review it. You were able to look at a couple of things, tweak a, lot, a couple of things here. Once we send it over to them, I, I sent, I, I put on the, on, on the memo, there was a couple of letters to that. By the way, I want to give a big thanks to Russ and, and Jesse and yourself, because uh, those letters uh, were really helpful where, you know, uh, when the carriers saw it, it brought more credibility to that PowerPoint. Uh, once they saw it, I, I told them, you know what? I know you're used to reading a hundred page document. I just want to make your life easier. Here's the PowerPoint. The, the, the marketing rep was like, Jose, Thank you for doing that. <laughs> simplicity, like, right? Thank you for They're blown away. It was Clarity, yes. simplicity, and certainty. And you made it simple. Good, good job. And visual. Yeah. Visual. They, they saw it. They saw it. It's like the whole story through that PowerPoint. They send it up to upper management. And, and by the way, guys, a lot of these carriers are not appointing right now. You know, they're, they're, they're a little bit on the defensive side because they don't know, like, what's going to happen. A lot of people are, are being defensive. We took an aggressive approach, an offensive approach, uh, and, uh, and they were blown away. They were blown away by it. Actually, today at 5 p.m., I have a call with that carrier for our training because our codes are going to be potentially issued by Friday or, or, or Monday morning. So we're excited about it. You know, now this, this opens up, you know, this opens up a lot of possibilities for our agency because moving forward, as long as we, we do what's right, we build profitable business with this carrier, we keep our loss ratios low, we'll be able to attract those additional carriers, you know, in the near future, which is a big, big, big win for us. Well, you're building the foundation to build the house and ultimately the multi-unit habitational complexes that are going to be sprinkled throughout I guess the Western United States for lack of a better geographical area to start with at least, right? Matter of time, my friend. Yeah. So fantastic. So, uh, through your hard work, through your vision, through you, uh, creating the story and you putting it into a visual platform, like a PowerPoint, great job. Um, so fact, we believe that facts tell and stories sell. Would you agree? A hundred percent. Yeah. 
hundred uh-huh. percent. So at the end of the day, uh, you told your story in the beginning of the podcast here. Thank you so much for sharing about the bakery. And you just turned around and did the same thing in the beginning of the PowerPoint, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people do business with people that they know, love, and trust. And so the, the cool thing about telling your story, uh, that resonates with people, especially on the carrier side. They want people that they know they can grow with and they can trust, Right. It's the trust of the relationship. And so you've built that story into the PowerPoint. You have lots of visuals. You're documenting your path as you go along. So you're able to pepper everything that you've done, uh, your community work and everything else into that story, that story brand, if you will. So great job. Thank you. So you got the appointment. um, and, And by the way, you know, also, companies, if you do a good enough job, they're always looking to grow with the right agency partner. So it, it's really, really important that you position yourself. And talk about, let's talk about the letters for just a minute, because where'd you get that idea? It was from you. Okay, thank you. So, yeah. anyway, uh, <laughs> it was, it was from... <laughs> I, I intentionally said that, thank you. But um, by the way, I'm 20 plus years ago, I learned it from somebody else. So there's nothing new under the sun, but we're you, the thing you and I have in common, but we are action takers. We are action takers without question. So anyway, there is nothing new under the sun. And at the end of the day, social proof is so key. And that's a key uh, lesson for you. And I want you to remember this in the fact that, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what we say we've done for other people. It's what other people say that we've already done for them. And that's the key. That's why social proof is so powerful. So kudos for you. You did all the work to make those happen. Uh, Fantastic job. Okay, so you built the PowerPoint, you told the story, you followed up um, relentlessly to get the appointment done. You got it done, it's done. So you've got this uh, top national carrier uh, you now represent, and you were looking for another preferred carrier Tell us what happened because well, you told me this the other day and I said, we got to share this story. Yes. On that one, what, what, what ended up happening is uh, there's a clear moratorium in my city. Uh, for some reason, uh, there's certain zip codes that some carriers are just not wanting to, 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 to go into, you know, for whatever reason it may be. Um, and uh, what I did is I got the same PowerPoint and on the end of the PowerPoint, what I did is on the last page, I put uh ensuring America's future together. I put the carrier's uh, logo first, and then I put the global first logo second. So all I did to the PowerPoint was I removed that carrier A, I added that carrier B, and I, and I said, listen, I know right now you have a moratorium. I wanted you to have this for us to be ready when you guys get ready to reopen. Got sent back up to management. Right now, we, we, we we're still pending that one, but it got reopened. They're, re- they're reviewing it as we speak, and uh, we still don't have something solid on that one, but they, it just reopened the whole thing once they received it. But they did not say no. They did not say no. So let's set, let's set the table here. This is a carrier who currently has a moratorium, by the way, uh, and I'm happy to um, talk about this in greater detail in a future date. It's called predictive analytics. The reasons the carriers are able to you know, cease doing business in any, any geographic area in today's marketplace and beyond. Uh, I was privileged to, to be on an agent panel at the National Predictive Analytics Conference a couple of years ago. What an eye-opening day that was for me. I mean, the old days of actuaries and people who have books and they're doing the math, it's over. They have predictive analysts. And these predictive analysts That's why carriers can shift on rates and and other guidelines so quickly in today's world because of predictive analytics, FYI. So that particular carrier B as well decided because of analytics and and their people said, you know, this geographic area, not so much now, but you've been able to, through your ability to create a story, to put a visual together, to, if you will, sell them on the vision of your business and present to them you've got them to turn their head and say, let's take a second look at this one because we may not want to miss this opportunity. So good for you. So my, my great encouragement is, uh, and because you invested in yourself, and I know you were on a, a recent training also uh, with a lot of people, um, 
fortunately for us in the social proof realm, we have collected almost 2,300 testimonials and other words of credibility and praise. And, and I commonly say, if I had a deal that I wanted to close, I would uh, freshen up that because we have all of our testimonials on a singular word document. I would take those and I would freshen them up, make it look real nice and clean. I'd print that whole list out onto a goldenrod piece of paper and I would ship it to whoever needed to see it. So just future thought on social proof. So great job. So I can't wait to hear the results of that. Um, so you pretty much at this point, you have your seven step hiring, uh, recruiting and hiring system, better said, recruiting and hiring. And as you know, always be recruiting. Would you agree? A hundred percent. We actually have a live, uh, we're receiving uh, uh, through, uh, through a, through a recruiting provider, we're receiving daily resumes and we keep on getting them in. We're not, we're, we're not going to turn it off. We're going to see it as an annual investment because you never know who's going to submit it. Although we might be filling in positions, we're just going to, you know, keep on going. And we also created this, which is, I don't think you can see it good, but it's, it's the card that it's uh, pretty much, it's join global first. We build the website. You know, uh, you, you, you recommended that to us. Uh, we were able to do a landing page on our current website. So as, as I'm, you know, driving on, around, going about my day, if I see someone or if I feel someone could potentially be good, I just give them this. No phone number, no nothing. Just join Global First. I want to find out if you're resourceful. If you're not, then. The, the greatest thing about that, it protects your time. It does. They're, they're not calling you. They're not walking in or anything else. They got to go to your career page to begin the application process and you make the decision and that's only if they follow those uh you know key instructions at the bottom of the page correct correct because you need people that have that can follow directions yes definitely and, and yes. Instead, you know, as, as we hire we're not going to be afraid to let people go one, one mistake we've done in the past is hoping people will change or hoping people will catch up to things yeah i mean if see that first month and it's not working out, I an hour, my friend. It, we're, we're not a good fit and we'll keep on going. Hire slow and fire fast. But I, I will suggest because uh, the world is changing faster than we can keep up with sometimes. Hire, my, my latest thing is, I've shifted that a little bit, hire slower. You don't want to hire too slow because I know uh, transparently that we lost a couple of candidates last year because we were hiring too slow. I mean, we needed to have that team interview uh, with the leadership team and somebody couldn't make the meeting, somebody couldn't make the meeting, somebody couldn't make the meeting, so we kept putting it off and the candidate wasn't going to wait anymore. So the lesson is just go with who's available and get the interview done. <laughs> <laughs> so, and, and now that we have this new tool, it seems to be pretty popular. Zoom, you've heard about yeah. it? <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> Zinter views are a snap. That's fantastic. Good stuff, man. So proud of you. So uh, into the future we go. You've got the uh, people thing figured out, if you will, right, right here on our wall. Uh, the people, the processes, and the promotion. You're continuing to build your processes, right? Yeah. yeah. And I know you're just an avid marketer, so your promotion is always going full strong. Uh, good for you on that. Um, so what's next? Next, next, uh, we're, we're finalizing right now our back office. Uh, we've been building our back office, uh, you know, so uh, one thing that I realized at, at the early stage was that I had to keep on, on, on training. Like if I had to train someone new, I had to keep on repeating myself, repeating myself. What we're doing now is we're recording a lot of videos and we developed that back office where we have, literally we put our whole underwriting guidelines in the back office. We have a section for that. We have a how-to video section for how to do certain steps within our company's systems, you know, whether it's quoting, whether it's, uh, you know, the management system or, or certain processes that they need to do. So we're pretty much documented everything within the company where people actually, as we speak now, if you were to go to our website, there's a section where it says Global First University. That's what we call their back office. You click on it, you put in the code, you could have access to this no matter, no matter where you're at. You could be at your house, through your cell phone, through your tablet, laptop, so there's really no excuse on, you know what, I didn't have time to learn this or study this because I was too busy at work. You have it at home. 30 Absolutely. minutes. You know, and, and, and we also, within it, we built the, the forms, like the job forms, but instead of having them individually, 
already on tabs, we integrated them into our back office. So when they go back there, they just do data entry and it goes to the correct departments. I mean, there's so many things we're doing back there, which is amazing, you know, but, but that's all part of freeing Carla and I from working in the business and we're working a lot on it. And uh, that's one of the things we, 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 we've been doing a lot of, like, sometimes I do find myself having to work in the business during the morning time because, uh, you know, with the hiring process, we, we have to have someone that's being trained. But uh, half of my day or towards the end of the day, I, I make sure that I'm working on the business to make sure that people, whenever they have a question or whenever they need anything, they could just have access to it in the back office. That is fantastic. So as we begin to wrap this up, I've got a couple of things I want to pull out of you if I can. I could sit here and talk to you all day, but uh, I know you have such a, a, an in-demand schedule nowadays because of your success. Speaking of success, what's one of your current daily habits that you strongly believe contributes to your success? Working. You think of something? What yeah. is it? Working, working out in the morning, getting up at 4 a.m., exercising. Uh, I think it's, it's really provided a lot of energy. Uh, I'm careful with what I eat. Uh, I, I'm careful with what I put into my mind. Uh, the audiobooks, uh, I, I understand sometimes it's hard, you know, we, it's, it's a lot easier to listen to the radio than it is to an audiobook. <laughs> you yeah. know, and sometimes you enjoy it a little bit more, but sometimes you just gotta, you know, it goes back to doing things even when you don't want to do it. I mean, yeah. once it goes off, I, I wake up, I, that's one of the things that I feel has helped out a lot. Also, uh, being aware of what my responsibilities are. Uh, that's just starting off my day, but uh, making sure I'm not, you know, putting my time into things that are not my, uh, my biggest strengths, you know, such as uh, trying to stay away from, from working, you know, in the business. It's, it's something that very easily we could get sucked into if we're not careful. So I'm conscious about it and I try to delegate as much as possible. That is a fantastic tip, and I hope everybody heard that. Uh, just to repeat what you said, because I'm aware of this as well, Jose has identified his top personal talents, gifts, vital functions, however you want to classify it, and you are, because of this awareness, you are endeavoring to work within only those areas uh, at least 80 to 90% of the time. Accurate? Yes. Fantastic job. Way to go. And He's empowering or delegating. And we used to say delegate and elevate, but now it's empower and elevate because we're teaching people to take care of the business and make those judgment calls so we don't have to, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I wanted to, I wanted to share a quote because I'm trying to make sure I get this memorized because I was doing a training recently and I didn't have it. And frankly, I was grinding on a little bit. So would you mind? <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, based on what we've been talking about, it's, it's an absolute key. So the late, great Zig Ziglar said, there's only one thing worse than training employees and losing them, and that's not training them and keeping them. So kudos to you for creating the back-end processes and systems that you need to train and continually train and grow and empower those excellent people that you're hiring within your agency business. Good job, man. I'm so proud of you. Fantastic. So uh, anything else you'd like to add? What's the most critical skill that you would recommend? I'm, I'm sorry, I interrupted you. Anything else to add? Inspect, inspect, inspect. inspect. Once, once, once you empower somebody else, don't assume it'll get done. Inspect it. Because then if you inspect it too late, you will be shot. Yeah, right? <laughs> inspect what you expect without question. So, and build in that accountability for them as well as yourself, right? Yes. It's fantastic. So uh, as we wrap it up, what do you think based on what you've learned so far in your journey uh, into business in the bakery business and now into the insurance agency business, um, not only your keys to success, but what do you think is the most critical skill that any agency entrepreneur out there that might be watching and or listening to this should be aware of that is an absolute key critical skill that a successful agency entrepreneur must possess? Sales. Okay. They Tell must, me more. They must be able to sell. sell they, we sell everything. We sell our spouses. We sell our kids. We sell our team. We sell the carriers. I mean, we're always selling. So the, the better of a salesman and communicator you become, 
the the better of a future agency uh, we'll have. So what's your suggestion for somebody who might be either watching or listening to this who is not really good in sales yet, but they're in the agency owner or leader chair? What do you suggest they do? Uh, listen to books. Listen to books. Be, you know, uh, participate in, in, in trainings that have to do with sales. Uh, whatever skill that, that you feel you need to improve on, uh, you have to develop yourself. You have to get around people. I, I believe, firmly believe that there's three things that will shape your future. One is the books you read, uh, the events you attend, and the people you associate with yourself with. So if you're not good at sales, associate yourself with salespeople. They'll, they'll, they'll make sure you, you take it up a notch. That's right. If we want things to change, we have to change. Would you agree? 100%. Fantastic. Uh, Jose Soriano, it's been an absolute pleasure and a treat and an honor to continue to learn from you as well. I'm so proud of your success. I'm so honored to stand by your side in the evolution uh, and the journey that Global First Insurance is on. Congratulations on your success. Thank you, Mike. Mike. And if I might add, uh, I could say one thing that really has uh, changed, you know, a lot of things for Carla and I, uh, I've attended the boot camp three years in a row and I will go there and I will like learn all this information. And I felt like all this information was thrown at me and I'll get back to the office and I was excited. And then I'll get to the office and the office hit me a couple of months down. I, I was, you know, I was back to doing the same thing. So Carla and I, this, this past um, October, I believe it was, uh, we made the decision to, uh, to join the platinum group. And by doing that, we're putting our money where our mouth's at. It, it's pushing us. It's, it's making us give it everything we have. And that has been something that has been really good for us because not only did we go all in, but we found out that there's a group of people who are all in with us, <laughs> you know, are there to help you, challenge you, get uncomfortable. Like me doing this today, this is the very first time I do it. Uh, you know, and I'm like, let's do it. Let's make it happen. You know, and, and it's not going to be the end of it. We're going to be challenged. And, and I'm looking forward to it because when we become uncomfortable, we grow. And uh, this has been really uh, a blessing to be part of this. And, and Carla and I, we understand that it's not even over yet. <laughs> we still got a long way before we even finish this year. And, 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 and whole is a career. So we, we are glad with the associations we're building within this group. But committing to this has been the best decision to be able to push us to take our business to, to the next level. Well, you're the one to be commended. Thank you so much for saying that. I, I wasn't even expecting that. But uh, thank you for saying that, but you're the one that made the decision. You're the one that took the action. Uh, you and Carla, congratulations on that. But, you know, the journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, right? Yeah. And I learned years ago, all progress starts by pushing into areas of discomfort. And I learned from my own accountability partner that we've got to get comfortable being uncomfortable. It's just the way of great entrepreneurship. I mean, you know, Richard Branson, who you've heard of from Virgin. I mean, he's got hundreds of companies and he's got, well, maybe not hundreds of companies. He's got a lot of companies, but uh, what he does have is he has hundreds of lawsuits going on at any one time because of all the companies that he gets to lead. And that's just the area of discomfort that this man operates in. He's become comfortable. It's just a business transaction, right? So yeah. kudos to you. And thank you for saying that. Uh, you are absolutely correct. And kudos to you again, because, you know, not everybody uh, is able to enter the platinum door. It's a pre-selected position, but uh, you were able to share your story and put yourself forward. So uh, we are honored to have you. We can't wait to watch you grow. Uh, and one other thing that I'll just, I need to add this is because one of the things I've noticed about you so far in, in working together in one of the platinum groups is you seem to show up for every single training. We recently had a training, uh, the Million Dollar Niche Blueprint, you showed up. We had a training uh, just within the last couple of days on how we're going to re-enter the marketplace due to all the uh, adversity that we've gone through this year, you showed up. I mean, you just show up all the time to become more all of the time. And uh, you know what I'm, what I'm seeing is the mirror because that's the way I was and I still am. Uh, I, I've tripled my investment in my own personal development for this year, not knowing what was gonna happen through this adversity, but I'm going through it. And, and that tripling, uh, tripling down, if you will, has paid 
uh, some real dividends. Uh, and what an honor it is, right? It is. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. It's the second most important thing, the events you attend. It could be live. It could be virtual. I mean, it's just being there. You, you, you're, you're just missing that little thing that's going to make that shift that is going to just take you to, to heights that you, you were wanting to get to. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, let's show them uh, the, one of the secrets, right? There's only one person standing between them and his success, right? There it is right there. <laughs> so kudos to you for taking care of what you see in the mirror, my friend. Thank you, Mike. All right, fantastic. Anything more to add? No, that's, that's it for me. All right, Jose Soriano, Global First Insurance uh, from Palmdale, California, and now beyond. Uh, congratulations on your success. Congratulations on your growing family. Uh, great health to you and your family. Please be safe. Please be well. Uh, and uh, thank you for investing time today to help everybody uh, that invest time to become more through the Unstoppable Profit Podcast. This is Mike Stromso coming to you live from the Living Agency Laboratory. We will uh, speak with you and see you literally on the next episode of the podcast. Until then, get out there, implement, execute, and take action. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Jose. Thank you for listening. If you would like to listen to more episodes or share this podcast with someone you care about, please visit www.unstoppableprofitpodcast.com. Now go out and make a difference. Be unstoppable and leave no regrets.